Hey, welcome back. What we have here are the internals and electronics and all the good juicy bits from our late 80s, early 90s treadmill. Uh, what we have, it looks complicated, right? It looks a little scary, but it's okay. We're gonna walk through this and we're gonna figure out how to separate this and anything it needs to run so we can use this on our, uh, on our mill. You could also use this for like a drill press, a lathe, I think it's like 2.5 horsepower, but 6,700 RPMs, 18 amps, 2.5 horsepower, 130 volts DC. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if that's actually true or not. Uh, it says clockwise rotation, because rotation does matter. Um, I've seen some people online ask, can you switch rotation? And I think we can, because it's, it's a DC motor, right? This is roughly how it came. I've already disassembled some of this, but I put it back together for illustrative purposes. What we have here is line voltage from your house coming in, going in through this little like thermal fuse or something. Uh, essentially, you draw too many amps, this pops, and it's got a little reset switch on the back. So it comes in, one line goes to this board here, which then uh, supplies voltage to this 9 volt DC power supply, which then supplies uh, current to the circuit board here that lights up all of this and lets you hit the thumb pulse and reset buttons and yada yada. Uh, the other, so then uh, the other line goes in through here uh, to a thermal switch buried deep inside of this. We can't really get to it to show you without cutting it open. Uh, but essentially, if this gets too hot, that switch triggers, cuts off the electricity of the entire system. Uh, I don't know if it's self-resetting or if it's like a fuse and, you know, it pops, you're screwed. Uh, but at any rate, that's inside there. So then it comes out, goes back up into here. Uh, where is that thing? Here it is. Ugh, this thing. So this is where the, this has a little, uh, little switch in it. Right here. And your, you, this thing had like a little red card you would insert, uh, to, to get the thing going. So this is just a switch. You could just put these wires back together, or you could have this be a safety switch where you'd have to like, hit a button for it to actually power on that we, like a little safety stop, e-stop type thing. Um, but yeah, that's all that is. Then you'll have a slide here for your speed, and then a power incline switch. But uh, the rest of this, this board, its power supply, the RPM, you, you don't need it. it. I mean, you don't want to be that guy, right? The guy that's got one of these mounted right up next to his drill press, and he's like controlling the drill press speed right here instead of on a potentiometer or something, right? You don't want to be that guy. All right, so that's gone. So this is the slide that controls the speed. It's just a... Uh, a little wiper moving along there. Uh, it what it does is it regulates. Uh, so this is connected through this long wire to here to this board. This board here is what drives this treadmill motor. This board here is what drives this uh, incline motor. The incline motor um, is told to go backwards or forwards uh, based on this. And uh, this is an AC mode. This right here, which is connected to the AC is just our power adapter that so that can go by the way we don't need that we'll just pull that off that goes in the trash i'm joking it goes into our parts bin for future projects so just chill um this was the this was a little reed switch whenever a magnet goes by it uh, will cause it to pulse uh, you might be able to use that for speed control if you get a little arduino or something um, it's, it's a useful component so we'll, we'll keep it all right parts bin parts bin Trash, trash, doesn't matter. Moving on. Alright, so, what is this? I originally thought this was a transformer, because, I mean, it looks like a transformer, but what it is, is this, uh, it's a choke, is what it's called, at least online. I'm going off what other people say. I don't, I, you know, I'm not an electrical engineer or anything like that, but I believe it's a choke. So what this does, because there's, on, there's, only there's only one set of leads going in or out of it, which means when and it's on the dc side right so red is dc coming out of the motor over there what that means is that when if you were to suddenly increase or decrease that dc um it, there's like a there's a lot of it's it's like water right it's water moving and there's a lot of energy in there and it's got a and when it stops it needs to go somewhere right so in a in a hydraulic system that might be like an air filled chamber to t to take that hammering effect out well, this is the kind of the same thing here. What it does is it uh, creates a big old electromagnetic field in here and stores the energy that way. So all that current uh, gets stored in an electrical field instead of 
slamming back into this board. My, some people will say you can take these off. My thought is to leave it. Let's go ahead and start separating out these boards. What do we need? What do we don't need? This particular motor, we see that it has these leads coming off of it. So let's trace them back. There we go. So we got that one there. Let's pull that off. And we got another one here. Pull that off. I think it goes without saying all of this is powered off and I am not I'm not taking any chances here. Alright, black, come off. Alright, so this is now gone. Into the parts bin for later. The motor, red wire comes back out through the choke and into A minus. All right. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and say this. I haven't tested this before, so we this this could get interesting. I'm just saying. It, if I if I smoke this motor, I hope you appreciate this. Because I could have just left it the way it was and at any rate, I hope you appreciate it. Here we go. Alright, so we're now plugged in. And I think it goes without saying that I've been doing all of this without it plugged in, okay? If I remember right, you had to slide it one way, it would reset, and then start sliding it the other way, and it would go. Try this way. Well, we've done hooped it. Where am I missing? What am I missing? Where and what am I missing? My switch. No, that wasn't it. Where are we? All right. So where are we screwing this thing up? Multimeter. Away. Now the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that something's changed here. Well, it's a couple days later. I.e., the shirt is no longer red. Um, and I wanted to redo this part because I didn't think it was very clear and. Um, and I kind of forgot to hit record last time. So here we are two days later trying to get it right the second time. Um, but I'm, I thought I'd go through this one more time. Uh, I'll probably edit out the last one. I'm just rambling. Here we go. So 120 volts AC comes in through this line. This is in our plug. This is plugged to your wall. It goes through this safety switch. So if you click that, it will turn on that little, little blinking red light here. All right, that powers up the board. It goes through that, um, through these blue wires into the motor, into the uh, internal thermal switch. Uh, so if this overheats, it'll trip and cut off power to the board and nobody blows up. Uh, I think it's a good thing. Um, it then goes, feeds the board. So this is AC. As long as you supply the board AC voltage here and here, these three leads go to the wiper, which is this resistive circuit that controls the voltage. Um, we then, so once this board has AC line voltage through these two cords, it then outputs DC voltage here and here in form of DC positive, DC negative. The DC positive goes into the motor, comes back out through this black wire, goes into the choke, which as explained earlier, I'm keeping. Uh, and goes back into the A minus, and this is all DC. Um, so if we uh, take this in our handy dandy safety obfuscator, attach it, and move the wiper. Eureka! She's taken off! All right, it's um, it's that simple. So notice that it's rotating clockwise as looking at it from that direction. Um, we'll go ahead and remove power from the board and swap these leads. All right, notice all I did was change these two wires, put the safety obfuscator back on, and power back up. Notice counterclockwise just fine no problem so you have a reversible motor out of a treadmill now I do want to point out one thing and that this is that 
this is a pretty old board, right? We're using these three leads to control the speed. It makes it real easy for us to come in and hack it. Now, I do have another board. Let me go get it. Okay, so we're back. Hmm. All right, here we go. This is the newer motor uh, driver that I found. Somebody threw this out in my neighborhood, but as you can see, get the A plus, A minus. Um, we got we got a tachometer input. We got incline sensor. So this is a much more sophisticated board. And then we have this Gasuta uh, Beninange. Uh, not sure what that is. Uh, actually, I think this is like ground signal. Um, dot, uh, I don't know, Humpty Dumpty uh, nine grandmas. I'm not sure. Uh, but suffice it to say, this is a much more complicated board, much more sophisticated. Uh, it's not really what we want. So we can supply power to it here, um, just like we did on this one. We have you know, uh, AC line voltage coming into here, two legs. Uh, but we don't really have a good way of controlling, um, you know, the motor. Um, I, I don't know how to make this do its thing because I have no idea what any of this does. Um, my guess is that there's some kind of modulated signal from the, uh, the panel on the treadmill comes into here. <gasps> I got an idea. We just, we just got that treadmill, right? The new one, the Nord track. It had kind of something like this. Oh, I wonder if we could just plug it in. All right, maybe when the wife is no longer uh, in love with that treadmill, we will try this and see if we can salvage this. You know, for science. Um, yeah, so at any rate, if you're going to buy one of these, if you're going to get one of, something like this, for your for your drill press for your lathe what have you don't don't buy one of these right don't buy if you see that run because that's much more complicated more complicated than we need to be right we just need simple we need this this is very simple three wires not eight all right with that said let's do some fun this says 130 volts dc i don't believe it it's probably rated for that but i don't think it gets it Usually these things will get like 90 or something. So, uh, where do we put that? Here it is. Okay. Yeah. So what we have here is a multimeter, and I've uh, I've hooked some alligator clips up to the end, and then we're gonna go ahead and hook those up to the positive and negative. DC voltage outputs. So we'll see what the motor's getting as we move the swiper. So in this case, we do want the swiper to swiping. Swiper, swipe. Hey, hey, stop hitting it. Oh, something fall off. Ah, oh, garly. All right. Let's try it again. Hey, there we go. All right, 21 volts. Wonder how low it'll run. 6 volts DC. Can I stop it? Not, not really. Okay. Ooh, wait, did that voltage just go up? Oh, it does. Ah, alright, so, golly, that burns. Probably should have. Don't do what I do. That was a bad idea. Alright. Moving on up. Fifty volts. Let's go a full way. Eesh. All right, ninety volts. Uh, I'm not gonna touch it this time. I'm not gonna do it. You can't make me. All right, we'll just we'll edit this part out. Edit it out. This is an MC-60 driver board uh, out of a Proform treadmill. My, my suggestion is look for that old dumpy treadmill on Craigslist for free. Just keep looking, surfing the free section, you know, go out on your lunch break, pick it up. Or, you know, you can find them for 50 bucks because they're, they're, the frame's rusting out, people are getting rid of them. 
get the older ones, because it seems like you won't have to deal with any of this shenanigans. Alright, that's it. Take care. Stay safe.